Module 8, VPN and IPsec concept. A virtual private networks to secure network traffic between sites and users, organizations use virtual private networks or VPNs to create end-to-end -end private network connections. A VPN is actually a virtual in that it carries information within a private network, but that information is actually transported over a public network. In this module, we're going to focus on the VPN technology, types of VPNs and IP security. It explains how VPNs and IPsec security are used to secure site-to-site -site and promote uh, and uh, remote access connectivity. As I said a while ago, a VPN is a private is a private in that. The traffic is encrypted to keep the data confidential while it is in, it is transport, transported over or across the public network. The figure shows that the shows a collection of various type of uh, VPNs managed by an enterprise main site, and the tunnel types of VPNs managed by an enterprise main site. The tunnel enables remote sites and users to access main sites network resources securely. And in the figure, a Cisco adaptive security appliance firewall helps organizations provide secure, high performance connectivity including VPNs and always on access for remote branches and mobile users. The SOHO, or the Small Office Home Office, uh, stands for Small Office Home Office, where a VPN-enabled router can provide VPN connectivity back to the corporate main site. And uh, Cisco AnyConnect, software that remote workers can use to establish client-based VPN connection with site, with the main site. So there are uh, different types of VPN, but the first type of VPN were strictly IP tunnels that did not include authentication or encryption of the data. For example, the generic routing encapsulations. This is a tunneling protocol developed by Cisco, which does not include encryption services. It is used to encapsulate IPv4 and IPv6 traffic inside an IP tunnel to create a virtual point-to-point -point link. Now, what are the VPN benefits? Uh, modern VPN now supports encryption features such as Internet Protocol Security, or the IPsec, and the Secure Socket Layer, or SSL, uh, VPNs to ensure network traffic between sites. Now, the major benefits, benefits of VPNs are, number one, cost savings. Uh, with the advent of cost-effective high-bandwidth technologies, organizations can use VPNs to reduce their connectivity cost while simultaneously increasing remote connection bandwidth. The second one is security. The security uh, where the VPNs provide the highest level of security available by using advanced encryption and authentication protocols that protect data from unauthorized access. The third one is the scalability. The scalability where the VPN allows organizations to use the internet, making it, making it easy to add new users without adding significant infrastructure. And last is the compatibility. The VPN can be implemented across a wide a variety of one link options, including all the popular broadband technologies. That's why it is compatible to any kind of popular broadband technologies. Remote workers can take advantage of these high-speed connections to gain secure access to their corporate networks. 
Now, the first type of VPN is the side-to-site uh, -side VPN, where in the side-to-site -side -side VPN, VPNs are commonly deployed in one of the following. Number one is the side-to-site -side VPN. This is created when a VPN terminating device is also called the VPN gateways. Are, uh, the, the VPN gateways are pre-configured with information to establish a secured channel. Uh, VPN traffic is only encrypted between these devices. Internal hosts uh, have no knowledge that a VPN is being used in this kind of uh, VPN, the site-to-site -site VPN. Another one is the remote access VPN. The remote access VPN is dynamically created to establish a secure connection between a client and a VPN terminating device. As you can see, for example, a remote access SSL VPN uh, is used when you check your banking information online. That is one example of a remote access VPN. When you are checking your banking information online. Now, a VPN can be managed and deployed as, number one, enterprise managed VPN or service provider managed VPN. In the enterprise managed VPN, the enterprise managed VPN are common solutions for securing uh, enterprise traffic across the internet. Site-to-site -site and remote access VPNs are created and managed by the enterprise using, the, using both IPsec and SSL VPNs. Whereas in the service provider managed VPNs, service provider managed VPNs are created and managed over the, over the provider network. The provider uses multiple multi-protocol label switching or the MPLS at layer two or layer three to create secure channels between an enterprise sites. MPLS is a routing technology that uh, technology the provider uses to create virtual paths between sites. This effectively segregates the traffic from the other customer traffic. And other legacy solutions include the frame relay and asynchronous transfer mode or the ATM VPNs. As you can see in the figure, different types of enterprise managed and service providers are being summarized. Uh, once deployed, that will be on the enterprise or the service provider managed VPNs. So the enterprise VPN is this common solution for securing enterprise traffic across the internet. As I mentioned a while ago, while the provide service provider VPN, this is created and managed by providers, uh, provider network and uh, provider uses MPLS. So it was already uh, mentioned that uh, types of the VPN are remote access VPN, mobile users securely connect to the enterprise by creating an encrypted tunnel. Uh, remote users can securely replicate their uh, enterprise security access including email and network applications. And the remote access VPNs are typically enabled dynamically by the user when required. Remote access VPNs can be created using either IPsec or SSL, as shown in this figure. And the VPN can be a clientless and a client based. VPN. In a client VPN, clientless VPN connection, the connection is secured using a web browser, SSL connections. SSL is uh, mostly used to protect HTTPS traffic or and email protocols such as IMAP and POP3. For example, 
HTTP is actually HTTP using an SSL tunnel. The SSL connection is first established and then HTTP data exchange over the connections. While in the client-based VPN connection, the VPN client software such as Cisco AnyConnect uh, secure mobility client must be installed on the remote users and, and device. User must initiate the VPN connections using the VPN client and then authenticate to the destination VPN gateways. The, when remote users are authenticated, they have access to corporate files and applications. The VPN client software encrypts the traffic using IPsec or SSL and forward it over the internet to the destination VPN gateway. The type of VPN method implemented based on the access requirements of the users and the organization's IT processes. The table compares RPSEC and SSL remote access deployments. So the features, if the application supported, the IPSEC is extensive, all IP-based application. SSL is limited. If authentication is, is, the feature is authentication is strength, the IPSEC is strong, two-way authentication with shared keys or digital certificates, while SSL is moderate. If the feature is encryption is strength, IPSEC is strong, SSL is moderate to strong, KLEN 40 to 256 bits. Another feature is if the VPN has connect connection complexity, IPSEC is medium, SSL is low. While in connection option, IPSEC is limited, SSL is extensive. So these are the type of VPN method implementation based on the access requirements of the users and the organization's IT processes. For the site-to-site -site IPsec VPN, the site-to-site -site IPsec VPN is uh, across, uh, used to connect across the network. And uh, the site-to-site -site VPN or IPsec VPN is, VPN are used to connect network across another untrusted uh, network such as the internet in a site-to-site -site, uh, VPN and uh, user or end host and, and receive normal un unencrypted encrypted TCP IP traffic through VPN terminating device. The VPN terminating is typically called the VPN gateway. A VPN gateway device could be a router or a firewall as shown in the figure below. The, for example, the Cisco Adaptive Security Appliance or the ASA shown on the right, firewall device that combines firewall, VPN concentrator, and intrusion prevention functionality into one software image. The VPN gateway encapsulates and encrypts outbound traffic and then it sends the traffic through the uh, VPN tunnel over the over uh, the internet to a VPN gateway at the target uh, site. Upon receipt, the receiving VPN gateway strips the headers, decrypt the content, and relay the packet towards the target host inside its private network. And the site-to-site -site VPNs are typically created and secured using IP security. Now, what is this another type of uh, VPN 
the GRE over IPSEC. The GRE or the generic routing encapsulation, generic routing encapsulation or GRE is a non-secure site-to-site VPN tunneling protocol. It can encapsulate, encapsulate various network layer protocols. It also supports multicast and broadcast traffic which may be necessary if the organization requires routing protocols to operate, to operate over, the, over a VPN. However, GRE does not by default support encryption and therefore it does not provide a secure VPN tunnel. A standard IPsec VPN non-GRE can only create secure tunnels for unicast traffic. Therefore, routing protocols will not exchange routing information over an IPsec VPN. Now, to solve this problem, we can encapsulate routing protocol traffic using GRE packet and then encapsulate the GRE packet into an IPsec packet to forward it securely to the destination VPN gateway. And the terms used to describe the encapsulation of GRE over IPsec tunnel are passenger protocol, carrier protocol, and transport protocol. As you can see in the figure, this figure depicts the encapsulation of GRE. over an IPsec tunnel. There are five fields in the IPsec packet. Uh, these are IP, GRE, IP, TCP, and data. IP is the transport protocol. GRE is a carrier protocol. And IP, TCP, and data are the passenger protocol. So this is how we did the, the fix the encapsulation of GRE. The three terms are transport protocol, carrier protocol, which is the GRE, and the passenger protocol, which is composed of IP, TCP, and data. So these are the terms, terms used to describe the encapsulation of GRE. The passenger protocol, this is the original packet that is to be encapsulated by GRE. It could be an IPv4 or IPv6 packet, a routing update, and more. And the second term is the carrier protocol, GRE in the carrier protocol that encapsulates the original passenger packet. And the transport protocol, this is the protocol that will actually be used to forward the packet. This could be IPv4 or IPv6. Now, in this figure, uh, it displays the topology, the branch and uh, headquarters would like to exchange OSPF routing information over an IPsec VPN. However, the IPsec does not support multicast traffic. Therefore, the, the GRE over IPsec is used to support the routing protocol over traffic over the IPsec VPN. Specifically, the OSPF packets, the passenger protocol, would be encapsulated by GRE that is the carrier protocol and subsequently encapsulated in an IPsec VPN channel as you can see in the figure. Now in order for us to see the actual packets, the, wire, the wire, wire, Wireshark software produced the Wireshark screen capture as you can, it displays an, I, an, it displays an OSPF uh, hello packets that was sent using GRE over IPsec. In, 
in the particular example, the original OSPF Hello Multicast Packet that is Passenger Protocol, as you can see in the figure, was encapsulated with GRE header. That is the carrier protocol, which is subsequently encapsulated by another IP header, and that is the transport protocol. And this IP header would then be forwarded over an IPsec channel. The, the display also of Warshark screen capture of an OSPF hello packet sent using GRE over IPsec. The transport portion of the output is outlined in the rectangle. and shows internet protocol version 4. The source is 192.168.12.1 and the destination is 192.168.23.3. Right, so this is just an example of uh, using Wireshark in order to display the encapsulation process of the using the IPsec. Another one is the dynamic multipoint VPN. The dynamic uh, multipoint VPN side-to-side -side uh, IPsec VPN and then GRE over IPsec are adequate to use when there are only a few sites to secure in, to securely interconnect. However, they are not sufficient with the enterprise adds many more sites. This is because each site would require static configurations to all other sites or to a central sites. Dynamic multipoint VPN or DMVPN is a Cisco software solutions for building multiple VPNs in an easy, dynamic, and scalable manner. Like other VPN types, DMVPN relies on IPsec to provide secure transport over a public network, such as the internet. And the DVPN simplifies the VPN tunnel configuration and provides flexible options to connect a central site with branch site. It uses a hub and spoke configurations to establish a full mesh topology. Spoke sites establish uh, secure VPN tunnels with a hub site, as you can see in the right figure. Each site is configured using multipoint generic routing encapsulation, or MGRE. The MGRE tunnel interface allows a single GR interface to dynamically support multiple IPsec channels. Therefore, when a new site requires a secure connection, the same configurations on the hub site would support the tunnel. No additional configuration would be required. A spoke sites could also obtain information about other spoke sites from the central sites and create virtual spoke-to-spoke -spoke tunnels, as you can see in the figure. The, the figure de depicts the dynamic multipoint VPN hub-to-spoke hub hub -spoke, uh, tunnels with spoke-to-spoke -spoke tunnels. The hub is a router which has three connections to other routers, as you can see. Spoke A, Spoke B, and Spoke C. There is a, a dotted line, triangle, connecting the spoke to another, uh, to one another. And the DMVP and hub, hub to spoke and spoke, spoke tunnels could also obtain information about other spoke site from central site and create virtual spoke to spoke tunnel. The IPsec virtual tunnel interface, like DM or DMVPNs, IPsec virtual tunnel interface 
or the VTI simplifies the configuration process required to support multiple sites and remote access. IPsec VTI configurations are applied to a virtual interface instead of uh, static mapping mapping the IPsec, IPsec session to a physical interface. IPsec VTI is capable of sending and receiving both IP unicast and multicast encrypted traffic. Therefore, routing protocols are automatically supported without having to configure the GRE tunnels. The IPC, IPsec VTI can be configured between sites or a hub and spoke, hub and spoke topology. The service provider MPLS uh, VPNs, the, the traditional service provider one solution such as list lines, frame relays, and ATM connections were inherently secure in their design. Uh, today, service provider use MPLS in the core network. Traffic is forwarded through the MPLS backbone using labels that are previously distributed among the core routers. Like legacy one connections, Traffic is secure because service provider customers cannot see each other's traffic. MPLS can provide clients with managed VPN solutions. Therefore, securing traffic between client sites is the responsibility of the service provider. Now, there are two types of MPLS VPN solutions supported by service provider. Number one is the layer three MPLS VPN. The service provider participate in customer routing by establishing a peer peering between the customer's routers and the provider's router. Then the customer routes, routes that are received by the provider's router are then redistributed through MPLS network to the customer's remote locations. The other one is the layer two MPLS VPN. The service provider is not involved in the customer routing. Instead, the provider deploys a virtual private services or service or VPLS to emulate an internet, Ethernet multi-access LAN segment over the MPLS network. No routing is involved. The, the customer's routers effectively, effectively belong to the same multi-access network. As you can see in the figure, it shows a service provider that offers both layer 2 and layer 3 MPLS VPN. So that's all for this video. The continuation of this uh, topic VPN will be on the next video.